Hi, this is Aaron Rupp. In our last video, we went through and went through the steps in our demonstration for making our boss, our pocket, our holes, and our material. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a blueprint from this part right here. So a blueprint, drawing, however you want to say it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my toolbar. Now you'll notice mine, I click this little pin right here so that way all of it stays visual. So yours might pop out, but what you're looking for is File. We'll come down to Make Drawing from Part. And if you haven't already saved it, it's going to ask you if you want to save it. So go ahead and save it to where you want to go. Um, you can click all these different types of landscapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the one that I made specifically for this blueprint. So I've actually gone through and I've customized my own blueprint. So all my headings and my uh, sheet format, everything I've, I've got all down there. So as soon as I open this up, you'll see I have the option for several different views. So obviously I want to go with my top view for this part because that's going to make more sense. Sometimes a left, right, or bottom view will make sense. So if when I do these, I usually like to give myself my top view. And if you come up, notice how I move my mouse up, it gives me the next view. And then if I come over, it gives me the side views, okay, the bottom views, okay. And then if I come from the corner out, I'm going to get an isometric view. So some of the views I like to use uh, for this drawing in particular, I'm just going to go ahead and use my top view. And I'll just click again, left click to drop it in place. Once I'm happy, you know, I can keep making more from this main top view that I have. Notice how it only comes off of there. I can't come off of here. So I'll hit the check mark. If you don't like it, the way you dropped it in there, you can actually click on it, type or hit delete, and then you can come back over here to this view, and then you can do it again. If you're not happy with what you had, you can grab, drag it into the view and do it again. So, but I am happy with what I got. I can start moving this as I get close to it. You'll see that I have a dotted line. I'm going to move this over. Now, it's not constrained to the main view because it's an isometric view. So I'm going to put this up here in the corner. And something I like to do with these views is if, as I click on it, you'll notice I have a tab, a, a toolbar come up. So I usually like to click Shaded with Edges. Now, it's up to you. You can do Shaded without. You can do all types of different views. But for the isometric, I like to keep it like that to give uh, anyone that's looking at my prints kind of a, a good visual. So on this one, it's not very big. So I want to make it bigger. So notice how I click on it, it changed to drawing view one. So I can shade it uh, for this particular part. I'm not going to shade it. I'm going to leave it just like this because I'm going to be putting some images down here and some notations and some smart dimensions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to go to use custom size. Now there's two ways to do it. I can start clicking on these, making them bigger, smaller. Now you'll notice they will adjust to each other because this being adjusted will affect this. But if I come over here and click this one and tell it to use a custom sheet, notice how it does it by itself. Now I'll make that just a little bit bigger, okay, and it's however you want it to be, and then, but if I come back here, it shouldn't be affecting it anymore. So I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger, but all these numbers are, it's going to take me too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to user defined. It's up here at the top. Right now I'm one of one. I want to make it a little bit bigger, so I'll go 0 0.3. I'll click off of it, got a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go the other direction. I'm going to go 0.8, click off of here. There we go. So now I've got a pretty good view. I'm going to make this one just a little bit smaller because I don't like how big it is. It's kind of in the way. So I'll do the same thing. I'll go to custom. Let's see if one fourth will work. It's just too small. So let's come back up to the top. I'll use user defined. And we'll do the same thing. We'll go two. Let's we'll see what that looks like. There we go. That looks pretty good. So. I don't want it to be so small that the person viewing my print can't get an idea of what it looks like. So I have it here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Annotations. 
Now I can click model items and what that's going to do is it's going to bring in a lot of the dimensions that we made on this in the last view. So what I'm going to do is kind of show you what it looks like. I'm going to go here, model items. I'm just going to hit select. When I hit select, it says, okay, do I want to give you the higher, entire model? I do. So it's going to bring in a lot of stuff. So this is not bad because we took our time and did it right. Now you can do this however you want. Uh, this is all the models so we can grab, drag it how we want to drag it. Come over here. That looks pretty good. I like that. It actually came in pretty decent. I'm not, I'm not too mad about how that looks. But what you want to do is you're trying to clean this up so that anyone looking at it can see it. So once we get this how I want it, we'll go through and start doing it little by little. And once we get it pretty close, notice how I've got four of these. So I don't want four of them, so I'll click the ones that are kind of in the way and just hit delete, delete, delete. And I'll pull this one down right here. And that one looks like it's going to be a little bit better kind of over here. Kind of move them just out a little bit. Remember, it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to the dragging and dropping. But uh, it will, you will get used to it. So I'm going to pull this over here. This might be a little bit boring. Okay, but this is kind of what you all have to do. So there's my bolt hole circle. So it tells me how big that is. That's what I need. I've got my distance from here to the side. And then I got this way up here. We're looking like we're getting pretty close. Now, anytime I click on a dimension, you'll see this little box come out. When I come over the box, I can tell it tolerances, unit precision. If I click on three, it's going to change it to that. If I go back to two, it'll change it to that. I can also, when I click on a dimension, so I click on this one. If I click on dimension, if I come over here, it says two inches, 755 thousandths. Now if I mount, if I click on it and come up, I can change it to a three place decimal. That's good. However, if your window for some reason is not popping up, I'll click on it again. I'll come over here and I've got tolerance and I've got the same window. So essentially it's a quick window and like, let's say um, I've got several of these that I want to be three place dimensions. Now when you change something, notice how some of these snap back into place. I'll kind of have to drag them where they were. Okay, it's kind of touchy. See, they did it again. I'll try it one more time. Click off of it. Try it again. Click off it. So I'm clicking off of it before I move the next one to kind of help me out. So that looks good. Looks like we got all our dimensions here. I'll kind of move this over so we can see it a little bit better. So what I want to do is I want to make all these three place decimals. So to do that, I'm going to come down here to IPS because I'm in inches, pounds, and seconds. I want to go to edit document units. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and see how it says length and decimal. Everything's to the two place decimal. So I'll click on it one time to bring up my drop down menu. Click on it one more time. Go to the three place decimal and then I'll hit OK. So notice now all my dimensions are to the third place decimal which is great. That's what I want. So Anyhow, anyhow, any way you want to do it, you can set it up to four place decimal. You can set it up to fifth, two, one. It's, it's whatever your preference is. I want to make sure that I have all my dimensions here. Now, if you'll notice, none of my uh, tolerances or on my modeled items brought in the pocket depth. So I don't know how deep to make my pocket. I know how deep my holes need to be but I don't know how deep the pocket needs to be. So that's good because we want to learn from this. So there's not really a way in this 2D model that we're working with to give myself a 3D smart dimensioning. So sometimes I can go to smart dimension and let's say this one inch 969 didn't show up. I can click on this wall. I can click on that wall and you can tell I'm going to get the same thing. So because I don't need it, I'll go ahead and delete it. So you can smart dimension your blueprints 
just like you smart dimension while making the part. So to get back to the pocket, I'm gonna come up here to note. So I'm gonna click note, and then notice how it's giving me a location. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here, and I'll bring it up now. Notice how I'm crossing lanes. I'll, I'll kind of clean it up as best I can, but we'll, uh, we'll type that in there, and we'll say pocket depth, or we'll say pocket, I'll hit enter, 0.196, deep and so what I'll do is when it says pocket depth right there I'll click off of it and those how it wants to do it again so what I'll do is I'll just hit escape and when I hit escape that'll allow me to kind of move it where I want to so I'll put it back in here try to make it kind of cleaned up so I'm gonna kind of move this around and I like that that looks pretty good to me we can kind of see it and like I said for your drawing you can put it wherever you want to and also, you'll notice that the boss, this, this outside profile, it did not come in with a depth as well. So I'll come in and I'll hit note again. I'm going to click right here, and I, I'm going to bring it down through the corner. That's the best way to bring it right here is through the corner, so that way I'm not crossing my lines. So let's go 150 thousandths. So let's say profile... 150 thousandths deep okay so now I'm gonna click off it again now notice it wants to do it again so what I usually do is I you can either hit the check mark or I usually hit escape because it is already there so I can move it in here I usually kinda of wanna give myself some more breathing room now one thing that'll help you too if you don't if you're running out of room you can get rid of this uh, three-dimensional model the isometric view and make this a little bit bigger or smaller whatever you need to do to clean it up what's very important is that you have all the information needed to make this part okay so this has all the information i need i believe it does anyway and so what we're going to do is make our final adjustments which will be the sheet format so this is obviously not the parts name we'll go in here and see who's modeled it and i'll kind of show you how to click on those so i'll go to sheet format I will edit the sheet format. Now remember in SolidWorks, your mouse scrolling up and down will zoom wherever the cursor is. So if my cursor is up here and I zoom in, it's going to start zooming to wherever my cursor is. So I'm going to put my cursor right here on the part name and just zoom in real slow. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll click once. And if I double click, I can change everything. So we're going to call this um 8m that's what we got that's what we're calling it right now and i'll just click off of it um i will also come up here to my date and i can change this to whatever day it is 19 now if it starts getting to be too big like say your name's too big so let's call it So that's really, that's, that's a big name. It's obviously not going to fit in here. So if you look at it, it's not going to fit. So what we'll do is we'll double click again with it highlighted. Make sure you have it highlighted. It works just like any Microsoft Office uh, platform. I'll come up here to my font size and I'll make it smaller. Still won't fit. I'll make it smaller again and it does fit. Now it's kind of up here up top so I can click on it. And if I click on it once, I can actually move it. Okay, I can move it wherever I want, but if I double click on it, I'm going to edit it. So I'll click off of it. I like how it looks. Kind of looks kind of weird with this outside box on there. There we go. I double clicked on it one more time. Kind of moved it to the right, but it's legible. Over here, same thing. I can double click on it. I can change my decimals. Maybe I want this to be a five and fourth place decimal. I want it to be one. I'll keep it there. So you can change pretty much everything you want to. Material. If, now notice how you can't see any wording here, but when it makes a tab in the center of it will be, I clicked one time, will be a box for editing. So I click off of it, it's kind of hidden in space, I double click on it, I can type whatever I want to. So type it in there, I'll click off of it, and there it is. Okay, so that looks pretty good. If you're having trouble with your zooming and you don't know where you're at, you can come up here to your quick zoom fit and zoom to sheet. I usually zoom to sheet. 
or zoom to fit. It's, it's whatever preference you have. Notice how I got my block over here. I'll double click on it one more time and click off. That helps. Kind of a weird quirk, but it's easy to fix. So now that I like everything, you can put your logo in here, put your name on who did it, revision, sheet one of two, one of one, not scaling. Once you're satisfied with that, you'll come up here and click edit sheet format again. So that turns it on and it turns it off. Okay, so now that I have everything, I wanna go ahead and I want to go to File, Save As, and I'll put this on my desktop just so you guys can see. So my desktop will make it 8M. Now notice this is a solid works drawing, DRW, the drawing right here. So this is not the actual part. So I can't edit my part from here, but I can edit my drawing with my part it, with, a, with it updating, okay? Because it's in the same software. So to desktop, I'm gonna hit save. So now this is on my desktop. However, I wanna save this as a PDF because I don't want people that don't have SolidWorks to not be able to access this print if they're making the part. So I'll come back up to file, save as, same name, except I'm gonna come over here to my drop down menu and I'm gonna to go to Adobe uh, DXF, it's whatever you wanna put it as. So if you're sending this to a company that has a uh, certain machine that reads DXF files or if you have a laser engraver for a drawing, it's just whatever uh, file it needs. But for this, for blueprint purposes, I'm gonna save it as a D, uh, PDF. So I'll click PDF, I want it on my desktop, I'll hit save. So if I come up to my desktop, I'll look for my drawing, my PDF. Okay, there's the SolidWorks drawing, DRW, but I wanna look at the PDF. And there it is, that's everything we have. So if we look at it, we might wanna change the pocket a little bit. Profile looks pretty good, probably move that one back up there. It's just whatever you wanna do to make it look clean. All right, so I've got pretty much everything I need on here. So. That concludes uh, using SolidWorks to make our drawings slash blueprints. Again, my name is Aaron Runk. I hope you enjoyed it.